All right, let's go to number two. Uh, here, we have to do everything. Um, increasing, decreasing, concavities, inflection points, critical points, local and absolute maxima, and graphing. All right, so f of x is x cubed minus 3x plus 2. What do you do first? Well, the first thing you do is to take the derivative to find the critical points. You know, let's, you know, make a little mental strategy here. And then you set, you know, set the derivative equal to zero, find your critical points, and then make a sign chart to see, determine where the function is increasing or decreasing. Take the second derivative, set that equal to zero to see if you have inflection points and so on. All right. So automatically, almost, your hand should move to start taking the derivative of this. So 3x squared minus 3. Uh, you can take 3, and you have x squared minus 1, which you can write as 3x plus 1, x minus 1. By the way, I think you will uh, notice that um, this is almost uh, an odd function, but it's not because of that plus 2. If this plus 2 weren't there, then this would be an odd function. But anyway, so then we set this equal to 0, right? And so that means x has to be either negative 1 or positive 1. Why? Well, because of the zero property of the reals. Okay, If the product of uh, real numbers is equal to zero, at least one of them has to be equal to zero. Now, three is never zero, but x, y is zero when x is negative one, x minus y is zero when x is equal to one. Now we want to find where the derivative f prime is positive or negative. Now, three is a positive number, so it does not affect the um, polarity or the sign of f prime. Uh, three is positive number. So all we have to do is to check the um, this term and this term or this factor and this factor to see where they are positive or negative. And the product uh, is positive if both are positive or both are negative, right? So x plus one. So the way I do this, and you probably noticed by now, I put these numbers here. And of course, negative one is to the left of uh, one. So that's what you do here, right? And um, then what you have to do is to determine where, you know, in each of these intervals and under each um, ex, uh, each um, um, critical point, whether these values are positive, zero, or negative. Now, if you plug in anything less than negative one, say negative two, this thing is going to be negative. And when you plug in negative one, of course, x plus y is zero. And then it becomes positive, positive, and positive, okay? Um, X minus one is actually negative when you plug in a number less than negative one. And it's still negative when you plug in negative one because negative one minus one is negative two. And then anything between negative one and one will still give you a negative number. Only when you plug in one, X minus one becomes zero. And after that, it becomes bigger than uh, zero. Right, And so the com combination, the product of these is going to give you times three is going to give you the sign of uh, F prime. That's negative times negative is positive. Zero times negative is zero. And this is negative, uh, negative times positive. And then positive times zero is zero. Positive times positive is positive. So F is increasing here, decreasing here, increasing. Clearly, you'll see a, a relative maximum here, a local maximum, and there's a local minimum, right? So you can already tell these things. Actually, let's try to plug in these numbers. Uh, negative 1, that's going to give you negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, minus 3 times negative 1 plus 2. And what is that number? That's negative 1 plus 3 plus 2, right? And that's 4. And then f of 1 is going to be one minus three plus two, and that's zero. Okay, so we know that this is one, four. Actually, we call this a local maximum, right? And we call this a local minimum. And you can tell that by the sign chart, this has to be a maximum, this has to be a minimum, locally speaking, right? So we will say that um, a local maximum occurs when x is equal to negative one and the local maximum is four. Alternatively, you could say a local maximum occurs at negative one comma four and local minimum occurs at one zero. Okay, so that is uh, one thing. And actually let's try to plug in negative two and positive two. You know what we're doing? We are trying to find 
an absolute maximum and absolute minimum uh, because we know all the critical points and now we just have to plug in the end points. Uh, negative two to the cube is negative eight minus three times negative two plus two. So that's negative eight plus six plus two and that is zero. And this will be eight minus three times two, that's six plus two and that's four. Okay, so uh, what's going on here? I think you can pretty much draw a, or the sketch this function here. Let me go ahead and make this more like a straight line here. Um, I have to have plus two and minus two and values are like, I need to have zero and four and so on, right? So uh, what do we have so far? I have negative one, four, that's here. And that's a local maximum. I have one zero, that's right here. And that's a local minimum. And I have negative two, zero, and then two, four. Okay. And you know, everything is smooth here and it's a cubic function, right? So you can pretty much figure out this has to be a maximum point and it's a smooth curve. So the graph has to go like this. Now we are given that uh, this domain, right? It's a restricted domain restricted to that uh, closed interval. And so it goes up and then comes down. Now, what is uh, f of zero? You don't have to calculate this to determine the absolute maximum or minimum. We know this is not a, a local or absolute extrema because these, you know, local extremum has to happen at a critical point, And this is not a critical point, but this one will certainly help if you are just trying to uh, graph this, right? And so plug in zero and you get two. So that's this point here. Now we pretty much have a good grasp of what the function looks like. It has to go like this. It's a smooth curve. This is a uh, local minimum here, as we noted. And so the graph has to look like this, okay? That's pretty easy, okay? And we this is consistent with what, with what we found. It's increasing up until negative one and it starts to decrease and it decreases until one and then it starts to increase again. All right, let's take the second derivative so that we can evaluate or determine the concavity of the function. The second derivative is the derivative of that. That's 6x, okay? That's very clear. Uh, this is zero when x is equal to zero. Okay, so the... Um, there's not much, uh, you don't really have to have a sign chart here because it's quite simple. Uh, but the second derivative is six times X, that's negative here, zero here, positive here. That means it's concave up, concave down here and concave up and the concavity changes right at zero. And we know the point is zero two. So that is the only inflection point of this function. Okay, so in fact, there's, you know, again, uh, the only one inflection point here, and that happens to be at zero two. You have a local maximum here, local minimum, the absolute, oh yeah, so the absolute maximum is actually the highest uh, y value, which is four, right? And this occurs at two points where x is negative one, uh, that's this one here, and two, right? And absolute minimum seems to occur at, well, the, the absolute minimum is zero and it occurs at X is equal to one, that's this, and uh, two. Oh, no, no, not two. Uh, where is that? Negative two, okay? So it's this point and this point. So this is how you would write the uh, correct answers. You said absolute maximum is four. Remember the absolute max, absolute min, uh, local max and min had to do with the y value. Where they occur um, is the x value. All right. And so uh, we have already said it's concave up um, on zero to two. Now this is function is defined at two, right? So this is up and then down on negative two to zero. Normally we just don't include right the, the, the point itself, the inflection point is um, 
usually excluded from the uh, you know um, these intervals for concavity. So it doesn't matter if you actually include zero or not in this as an endpoint. Okay, but anyway, so that's that. All right, let's go back and check. Make sure you know it's a good idea to go back and read the question again. Uh, we are given this function on the closed interval, and we are to find all local max and min, which we did, absolute max and min, which we did. Uh, and by the way, we knew that there is an absolute maximum and there is an absolute minimum because this is a continuous function on uh, on a closed and bounded interval. It's the extreme value theorem that guarantees for us the existence of an absolute maximum and a minimum. Uh, where the functions are increasing and decreasing, we did that, concave up and down, and all the inflection points, which there was one of, and sketch the curve, which we did. Okay, so that's good. That's what we have. All right, let's go to number three. 